Okay, well, welcome back everyone. Um, I thought that was a fabulous uh, question and answer discussion panel on scholar advocacy and I just want to give everyone who participated another hand. Great. Um, well, we are continuing our Scholar Advocacy Day uh, with three more presentations, and I'm going to be giving the first of the three, and I'm going to be talking about a brand new project um, called the Whale Sanctuary Project. Now, we know that large wild animals cannot thrive in zoos, aquariums, circuses, and labs. That's a fact. That's not opinion. That's fact. There are wildlife sanctuaries for all kinds of animals. There's elephant sanctuaries, there's primate sanctuaries, sanctuaries for big cats, bears, but nothing for cetaceans anywhere in the world. Nothing. So all the attempts to get these animals out of concrete tanks can't go any further until we have some place for them to go. And that's what the mission of the Whale Sanctuary Project is. We're a new organization, we're a nonprofit organization. We just incorporated, and uh, a little bit later, I'll tell you a little bit more about our activities and what we're doing. But our mission is to establish a model seaside sanctuary where cetaceans can live in an environment that maximizes well-being and autonomy and is as close as possible to their natural habitat. We have, as part of the Whale Sanctuary Project, a world-class team of experts. Some of them are in this room. And to put together a project whose mission is to build something that's never been done before on a permanent basis, a permanent home, retirement home, for dolphins and whales, takes experts from every aspect <coughs> that you can imagine. And we have advisors from animal care and training, including Jeff Ventry and Carol Ray and Sam Berg and, and John Jett and John Hargrove. We've got veterinarians on board, the best, the A-list of animal care and training, marine mammal sciences, Dr. Naomi Rose, Dr. Ingrid Visser are involved in this project. Sanctuary operations and management, you got to know how to run something like this. I learned that you know it's not enough just to know the science of how these animals live, but you have to know how to run the people and get an organization to be an efficient uh, path to to your goal. And we have people on our team that are brilliant at sanctuary operations and management. We also have to deal with policy and regulatory compliance. There's issues with, you can't just plop down anywhere you see a cove and throw a net across it. You've got to deal with the regulatory issues that go with whatever that site, wherever that site is. Public education and outreach, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that, is very, very important. Because it's not enough just to, um, it, it, it's not enough to, even as a sanctuary, house animals. The idea behind a true sanctuary is really to re-educate and reframe uh, the, the issues that uh, our relationship with the other animals. 
business development, PR, and marketing. Um, we've got some of the best people around, including Kim Ventry and, and many others who are helping to bring this to uh, potential funders, to the public, and to be sort of, to provide um, the business end of things. And uh, it's very important is site selection, design, and engineering, which we're engaged in now. And we have Michael Parks here with us um, and many other uh, experts who are helping us to find a place where we can put the Well Sanctuary Project. So this, these are just very general categories of actual areas of expertise that you need to do this. And we have some of the best in the world. Now, I just want to go back because I think I thought that there was a, a slide that skipped there. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, just to go back to this, because I think it's really important if we're talking about this new venture, the Whale Sanctuary Project, that we understand what a sanctuary actually is. Because there's a lot of facilities out there that claim that they're wild animal sanctuaries, but they're actually not. So what is a sanctuary? A sanctuary is a place of refuge where abused, injured, and abandoned captive wildlife may live in peace and dignity for the remainder of their lives. True wildlife sanctuaries do not breed or exploit for commercial purposes. That's really important. If somebody says to you, I run a sanctuary and we're breeding the animals, they're not a sanctuary. A true sanctuary respects the integrity of individual animals. So it's not a one-size-fits-all situation. When you're running a sanctuary, every individual in that sanctuary has different needs, different history, and has to be treated as an individual. And a sanctuary provides safe, healthy, and secure refuge in enclosures specifically designed for the unique animal which it supports. And this is a definition coming from one of the best wildlife sanctuaries I know of in the United States, the Performing Animal Welfare Society. They house elephants, big cats, they know how to do it. Um, and they're, they're a superb model for what a true sanctuary really is. And, as I mentioned, there are sanctuaries for everyone but cetaceans. And thus, our mission is that. And, and just to bring us back to our team of experts, it takes this kind of collaborative team of experts from all areas to make something like an authentic sanctuary work. Now, a lot of people have said to me, well, okay, you have created the Whale Sanctuary Project. Why can't you just release them all? And there's a lot of people who've been very critical of our project because they think that we're trying to hold the animals back or something. But in fact, no legitimate sanctuary ever has as its goal to release any of the animals. A legitimate sanctuary has as its goal, as I said before, to give the animals back something of what was taken from them and do that in a safe, secure, science-based way. Now, when you think about the population of dolphins and whales that might be in a sanctuary like this, first of all, if they're captive-born, they're not going to survive in the wild. 
So the next best thing is to give them a place where they can live as close as possible to their natural life. Some wild-caught dolphins and whales can be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis, and that's what we will do. But that takes a lot of time. And all these decisions must be made according to best scientific practices with the animal, the individual animal's welfare as the priority, not our agenda. So that's why we are not saying that we can just take them all and release them into the wild and they'll find their families and swim off into the sunset. Because we know that's not realistic and that may not be the best thing for the animals. Here's our concept for the Whale Sanctuary Project. We're going to build a cold water natural environment in North America, sufficient in size and complexity to serve a population of orcas and belugas retired from entertainment, as well as wild individuals needing care and rehabilitation. So yes, we're building this because we want there to be an alternative to orcas, belugas, being in concrete tanks and doing stupid pet tricks for food. And the alternative is sanctuary. But we also will be participating in the rehabilitation of injured, stranded, sick animals as well. Now, what we want to do here is something that's never been done before. We are interested in being the model, the gold standard. In other words, we want to do this right the first time, and we hope that when we do, other people will say, yeah, it can be done, proof of concept, and then it starts proliferating. I know there's a, several efforts global going on right now that are similar to this. Whoever is the first or whatever, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that what we're going to do with the Well Sanctuary Project is we want to create the gold standard model. And we will have a global reach um, where we may be taking in orcas or belugas from other countries. Um, we will have at this facility world-class scientific and veterinary practice. Authentic, and that's really important, authentic, interactive public education and outreach, transparency, and sharing of information. Anybody wants to know how we do it, we'll tell them and hope that they're successful. There'll be no breeding, no commercial exploitation, no performances, and no intrusive research. And what you see here is just a very, very general concept drawing uh, of what we want to do. We are looking at natural bays, inlets, coves, uh, where we could net across the mouth of that area and provide the space, the depth, and the natural uh, rhythms of the ocean to the residents. Um, we will also have a visitor center, public display, and so forth, but it will be nothing like what you see in theme parks today. So I'm very excited about the fact that with this whale sanctuary project, people will actually get to understand why these animals need to be in the ocean. And we won't have to <coughs> tell people something that's not true about the animals because everyone that walks into the visitor center will have the story, the history of the animals and residents and they'll know why they're there, what their history was and why they should have been left in the ocean or born in the ocean to begin with. So not only do we plan to have a large expanse of water um, where it can be compartmentalized and have different animals in either social groups, depending upon how they get along. 
We will have medical facilities, veterinary facilities, um, staff facilities, training facilities, all of that, a whole infrastructure. The public um, will be allowed to visit, but in a much less intrusive way than they are um, at places like theme, uh, theme parks, and we will have a visitor center. And I'm really excited about that as a, as a teacher, too, because what we plan to offer at this visitor center is cutting edge educational technology. And there is a lot of brilliant work that's being done out there. I'm talking to a bunch of people. Uh, Thursday, I think Lawrence Curtis is gonna give a, a talk about his work in this area. This is um, something from Christina Colissimo. Uh, this is a, a 360 3D concept drawing of, of an immersion experience. So you can go in there, you can actually interact with the individuals virtually, um, and we can provide for you an authentic experience of what it would be like to be an orca or a beluga whale. So our educational visitor center is gonna be through the roof, cutting edge, um, as the whole of the sanctuary. Right now, we're engaged in site selection. And that's going to take the next few months because it's a very, very data intensive uh, task. Now, as I mentioned, we are looking in cold waters because we want to provide a sanctuary for cold water species, primarily orcas and belugas. And we're looking on the East Coast in Maine and Nova Scotia and on the West Coast in Washington and DC. So could be right in your backyard here. Um, but those are the areas on a very general level that we're looking at and we've got a very, very intensive site selection, data-driven uh, process going on right now. And uh, we're hoping to come up with a short list of sites to take to the next level by the end of the year. So what are some of the criteria for site selection? Well, it's, it's very important to choose the right site. I mean, that, that may be the most important thing of all because that's where these animals are gonna be living and that's where you wanna have uh, a lot of stability in terms of erecting a project like this and, and maintaining the welfare of any number of residents. That site has to be within the appropriate temperature range and salinity range for those species. It should generally be protected from extreme weather. And these are, these are criteria that um, Naomi Rose came up with um, and we're vetting right now and, and give you a sense of what we're looking for. We want an area where we're going to be able to avoid a lot of pollutants, um, sewage, chemical pollution, as well as a lot of heavy-duty acoustic pollution, which is very important. Uh, an area where there's a good flushing rate through. A minimum depth of at least 15 meters for at least half of the sanctuary, when you consider the fact that the deepest pool in SeaWorld is something like 32 feet, that's quite a bit more. We want the ability to create separate compartments for medical and management purposes. So we will, we're not just gonna have the animals out there, good luck, have a nice life. We will care for them. Many of them will still need uh, veterinary procedures because of their time in captivity and so forth, and we'll be able to give it to them. We're looking to hold between five to eight individuals in our first sanctuary. Uh, we're looking for sanctuary where there's no ice cover and there's accessibility in terms of a nearby airport as well as uh, accessibility to um, human civilization in some form or another, utilities and infrastructure. So these are just sort of like the 32,000 foot criteria that we're looking at now. And you can imagine with this kind of criteria um, profile, there are a lot of places 
um, to look at, and we are doing our best to get those narrowed down. Now, the thing about this project um, is that we are moving at a breakneck speed, much faster than I, I can speak for everyone anticipated that we, you know, anticipated. We're all, you know, zooming through this, but at the same time, doing this the right way and putting a lot of thoughtfulness and expertise and skill into this. This is just an example of how fast we're moving on to some of our milestones and our timeline. So it was just a couple months ago in April 2016 that we incorporated as a nonprofit organization. Well, we applied for nonprofit status, we should be getting that any moment now. But we incorporated only in April 2016. The following month, we launched publicly, and we did so with a profile in Science Magazine, which is the premier science magazine in the world. Just, let's see, it's still July. Okay, well we're up to now. We just came back from uh, our kickoff strategic planning meeting in Los Angeles where we all got together and talked about the plan. Um, because, you know, to do something like this, you can't do it seat of the pants, you gotta have a plan, you gotta have it written out, and you have to have someone to help guide you, navigate you through that plan, and uh, again, like I said, I, I can't say enough for the level of expertise that we have. If we can't do this, nobody can. So we really do have the best team. Now, coming up, our site selection survey will begin in earnest. We have been doing a lot of work. Some people like Michael Parks and others on our team have already done a lot of work on setting up our how we're going to look through the data, but come August, or as soon as I get back, it's hit the ground running, and we've got tons of data to get through. Wait, wait, ways we have to wait the different factors, um, and we have to come up with um, something that looks like a short list by the end of the year. So by December 2016, we will have completed our three to five year plan and provide a short list of sites, which means maybe half a dozen sites that we then take into the next phase of our project, go on the ground or on the water as it were, and begin on the ground analyses of each site, honing that down to one or two sites that we then make a decision on and then start to develop and build. And, you know, we could not do this without um, the donations from a number of people. There's uh, several people probably in this room who have donated to the Whale Sanctuary Project and I don't care how much it is, I wanna thank you. I wanna thank the public for all your support. Um, there's one or two people who have given a little bit more than 10 or $20 and uh, I thank them. And we also have a very major donor, which is the Munchkin Corporation. They make baby products. And without them, we wouldn't have this timeline here. We'd still be, I mean, waiting to figure out how we're going to do this. And because of them, we're doing it now. And we're moving along. So we're really grateful to them. So I thought I'd keep this short and sweet in case you had any questions, but I invite you to go to our website at www.whalesanctuaryproject.org. We have a Facebook page, we have a Twitter page, we do social media. And I also want to mention that uh, we now have t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> And there's more to come. 
And we've got a table out back, uh, and after this, these sessions, um, we'll be out there. I'll be out there with Michael Mountain, who's also wearing a t-shirt. Um, if you want to purchase a t-shirt, we'll be taking orders. Um, and there's more to come. Um, and again, can't thank you enough for your support. Um, we've got a long way to go, but we anticipate that within three to five years, if all goes according to plan, um, we'll be able to cut a ribbon on the first permanent whale sanctuary in North America. Thank you. talk about having a Q&A, but her <coughs> presentation was so thorough, everybody got all of their questions answered, and you can go to the website. Do you have a question? I just want to know, can we donate for the website? Yes. All right. We, yes. We, we encourage you to donate. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just to say one thing. Michael Mountain is standing in the back of the room. He's not just a t-shirt guy. He's, he's been our outreach coordinator. And again, without him, we couldn't have done this. So I just want to give him a hand. Yeah. is already going on in theme parks and aquaria. Um, they, pretty much the management decides who breathes with who and when. And the reason we don't want to encourage breeding is because we don't want to move <coughs> more animals, more individuals who need to be kept in sanctuaries. A real sanctuary wants to go out of business. And there will be, there's well-established ways to manage um, the animals in a way that we will minimize the chances that they can be, um, that they will give birth. The answer to that is yes, there is over, yes. Yes. There is too. There is, there is also chemical means of, of um, birth control as well. We're not going to experiment with the animals, but there's a number of tried and true ways that have already shown to be effective. Are you sharing your expertise with the Baltimore Aquarium, um, national and their you know, places? Absolutely. Um, I think that what they have announced is phenomenal because it comes from the industry itself. So I really have to give John Racanelli a lot of credit. Um, you know. He is the uh, CEO of the, the National Aquarium in Baltimore, and they, as you know, just announced uh, a few weeks ago that they're going to be retiring all of their eight bottomless dolphins to a sanctuary. <laughs> that they're going to be looking at in either the Caribbean or Florida. So they're going to be doing a warm water sanctuary, we're going to be doing the cold water sanctuary, and we're in discussion with them. And I can't wait to sit down with them and, and help them in any way we can. And they feel the same way. And that's the, the thing about it is this is we need to help each other to create this new alternative. And we will. <laughs>